Hi, welcome back. You're in the bonus section of API throttling and tuning for AWS. My name is Dennis. Let's go ahead and get started. Our learning objectives includes interpreting error conditions and utilizing the SDK built-in handling controls and writing custom functions to handle uh, throttling and other conditions that you might see. Let's start off with AWS HTTP error status codes. Now, traditionally in previous foundations modules, you saw 200 means okay, 400 series is a client side uh, condition, usually 401 for unauthorized, uh, 500 for a general internal server error addition. Let's dig a little bit deeper into what those mean and where the error conditions are precisely at in terms of AWS services. So high level codes as a general reminder, 200 codes are related to the, could be errors related to X AMZ function dash error. Some common ones are like, such as a Lambda and API gateway integration services. The HTTP request might have come through and been accepted. However, the processing portion, Lambda might have failed and produced and raised an error. And that custom error is provided in the XAMZ dash function dash error header. Reminder, this is on the AWS developer associate level exam. The 4XX or the 400 series could include other problems. Remember, it's always client side. 400 always means client side. So let's go ahead and do a quick solution here. Client problem. 401 being usually a lack of permissions or can have additional error context provided to you in the error statement itself, such as uh, permissions or expired session token. You should adjust your configuration and reattempt as part of your application and the exception is sometimes a 429 series. Now that's also common on the AWS Developer Associate exam. That's usually associated with the API throttling limit. And that's a configuration that's also uh, on the client side that you can help mitigate using the SDK using exponential backoff uh, strategies. The 500 series includes an AWS server side issue, which can denote a temporary problem or a more configuration problem on either side. It could be on the uh, AWS server side, which is AWS or the one time owner, such as Lambda being misconfigured with the API gateway and stage variables. So, Let's get some common resolutions to common errors that you might see, especially on the exam. The 403 is an expired token error. In most cases, it also means uh, forbidden versus unauthorized. Now, if you have an STS expired token, you need to invoke a new STS get token request and get the fresh token. You should never reuse an old token or attempt to reuse one as this will call additional errors in logging. Now, if your token was placed in an environment variable, which you saw in a previous module with our session, ensure that the variables are becoming updated with a new fetch. This could be an issue with your code um, or also issues with no clobber features enabled. The 429 or the API throttling related to, uh, status code includes rate exceeded or too many request exception errors. You should implement exponential backoff and other adaptive mechanisms whenever possible. After 2016, photo 3 included the SDK. Uh, exponential backup strategies built in. If you have a Lambda function, you should also consider adjusting your Lambda concurrency uh, and quota reserves accordingly. Remember that you have a quota maximized uh, for each account. By default, uh, it's less than a thousand. Another one is the 500 status internal server error. This is a rare, rare occasion when an AWS specific service issue is on the backend on AWS itself. Now, there is another feature of this. This could be a configuration problem on your side, especially with Elastic Load Balancer. Let's say you have the port open on Elastic Load Balancer, but those hard groups have closed ports or incorrect uh, permission errors, such as the AWS WAF ACL is having issues with processing, or perhaps the security uh, groups and knackles are also not allowing uh, inward traffic in and not producing a TCP reset. For that purpose, you might see a 500 service uh, internal error as opposed to a different error. If you're utilizing API gateway and you see such a thing, ensure your stage variables are uh, have the invocation permissions as well as probably including a soon role for the trust policy. For the 503 status service errors, you'll see service and unavailable and that's more on the AWS side. This is usually a very, very temporary thing. If you see 503 as a status error, it's usually due to a deprecation of service uh, or uh, a, an, a healthy service issue, check the AWS Service Health dashboard to 
make sure that your services are uh, in the green notation. If necessary, contact your AWS support contact and go ahead and get a ticket started. Now, let's look at how do you do exponential backoff for errors and the strategies among them. What are the code? What does it look like when you actually utilize this? So Builder 3 includes its own version, which is the backoff tuning uh, strategies, which includes legacy, standard, and adaptive. The standard one is capped at 20 seconds maximum with a base factor of two. Notice that right here, we have a uh, competing uh, clients right here. And as your client scale, then therefore your, your exponential backup actually scales with you, providing the better benefit. However, that's limited or capped based on 20 seconds. Now, this also does not include what a concept called jitter. Jitter means that you have uh, randomization. So think of randomization insert it into your formula right here. So the legacy Builder 3 client kill with older versions of Python, it is not refactored to include this strategy. All right. So if you're utilizing legacy code or libraries from pre-2016, keep this in mind that you don't have exponential backup baked in. And by default, legacy or standard mode behavior, depending on your package version, has a maximum of five retries, and it makes uh, it actually does the exponential backup based on parsing status codes 429, 500s, and ending with 509 here. So here are the tuning methods. <clears throat> you can write your own code, which is to the left right here, which is your own version of an exponential backup. Notice it keeps. Um, a jitter right here, which is one I said is randomization. And the two base factor. That's how you would write it in Python uh, with your own functional definition. Or you can utilize the adaptive mode inside Photo 3 on a modern client. And it'll provide an additional uh, client side throttling in addition to its additional strategies, including max attempts and retries. Let's look at error handling. Now, one of the most important things inside Python, which you saw in the last foundations, was try and accept. And then there's also finally. Now, why try and accept with Boto 3 exceptions as opposed to Python native exceptions? Well, the cool thing is you can actually parse utilizing uh, lists, right? List based parsing, and you can define very specific exceptions to client based or resource based um, APIs and to make better decisions on how to actually gracefully error, uh, handle error exceptions. In addition to the client side low level, you can actually utilize the resource level, which is right here. And you would just use client meta exceptions and a bucket already exists. In other case, you need to refer to the Boto3 SDK documentation to understand all the different aspects and uh, context links that you have. This is the preferred method in some cases, and this is the preferred method if you're using resources. Keep this in mind as you go through. All right, let's take a break, and then you should get on to your labs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next lecture.